Hi, and welcome to another episode of Blue Sky Bonsai. It's the middle of August, and I'm here in the north of Spain in a village called Matayana. And I've come here because there are some beautiful Pyrenean oaks which grow here. And the Pyrenean oaks are quite similar to English oaks. Um, so last November I took about 50 acorns from this forest here and uh, planted them and they have had a very high success rate. So I'll show you those now. So here's my collection of deciduous oaks in its entirety. You've got English oaks over to the right. There's a couple of larger shoots and the rest are seedlings from last autumn. And then to the left, these are all Pyrenean oaks. Now they're pretty similar in some ways to the English oaks, but they are smaller, they have smaller leaves. They're planted all at the same time, so you can see the difference between leaves. I think these Pyrenean oaks are going to make really fine, beautiful bonsai. So I did plant quite a lot of them. With a bit of luck, next spring I'll be able to wire them, start getting, giving them some shape, choosing which ones will be twin trunks, for example. They're all doing very well. So I've planted all of these Pyrenean oaks and we can make some good bonsai out of them in the future. Of course, when you grow bonsai from seed, it takes quite a lot longer than if you just go to a garden centre or a bonsai nursery. So let's have a, a closer look at the leaves here. You can see they're very similar to the English oak leaves, but they are actually, I think, a bit smaller. The lobes go in a lot deeper than English oaks. And when you get a small leaf, they are really very pretty. We can get smaller leaves than this on a bonsai by all the pruning techniques. The other thing we need to do is study a little bit about how the trunks are and how they grow. So let's have a look just over here. You can see the trunks on some of them, they're quite thin trunks, but they've got really beautiful bark. Let's see if any are suitable for Yamadori and I can come back here in autumn maybe and pick up two or three of these already developed. So here are my tips for collecting acorns and making absolutely sure that they're going to germinate, root and grow into healthy oaks. Firstly, you want to make sure that the acorns are fully developed, so wait until mid to late autumn. Just before you actually go out, make sure you've got with you a sealable plastic bag with some moisture inside it. I'll talk more about that in just a minute. If possible, pick them off the trees that you like, because the ones you find on the ground, well, you just don't know how long they've been there. Next tip, you don't just want to collect a couple or ten. I would say go out and get at least 50 acorns from a number of different trees. 
because some won't germinate and some will germinate but then won't grow properly and others will grow and then die so it's always better to, to take more than you actually need. Now here's an important tip and really this one is key especially for deciduous oaks. Absolutely critical that the acorn does not dry out. That's why you take the sealable bag with moisture in it because each acorn you pick you just want to store in that bag. I took some sphagnum moss in mine just to make sure it kept humid for many days. When you get home, empty all the acorns out into a container and you'll notice that some of them have lost their cups. The acorns do not need those cups, it doesn't matter whether they've got them on or not. Next tip, fill that container with water and see if any of the acorns float. Any that float you can just trash because those acorns are not viable, they're basically empty, they're not going to grow. Next, you wanna put them back in the sealable bag with sphagnum moss or with damp kitchen paper if you want. I put about half of mine in sphagnum moss and the other half in damp kitchen paper to see if there was any difference. And in fact, there wasn't much difference except for the fact that in the sphagnum moss, it was much easier to see when the seeds had germinated without having to try and unravel the quickly disintegrating tissue paper each time. Then put your sealable bag into a darker plastic bag or container so no light can get to your acorns while they're germinating and store it away somewhere undisturbed for a month or so. I actually use the fridge because although you don't need to necessarily keep them cold, it does actually help to avoid the buildup of mold in that humid bag. After about a month, check the acorns every few days to see if any of them have germinated and are starting to root. Any acorns that have roots about half a centimetre or a quarter of an inch long, they are ready to be potted. The root always comes out before the shoot, so you'll know where the root is. You need to plant it pointing downwards. Interestingly, all plants actually have gravity sensing cells in their roots so that they can send the roots downwards towards water and nutrients. But when you plant it, you want to point it in the right direction to start with. So let's have a look at some of these potted Pyrenean oaks, three quarters of a year on from when I planted them as acorns in various different soils and different containers so we can have a look at how they've developed in those. Now this first one is in a mix of cat litter and peat moss type soil and it's a good draining mix and the shoot here has developed pretty well. This next one uh, pretty similar, pretty similar soil and pretty similar growth. These pots are actually bigger than you need for the first year of growth, but I won't have to repot these ones in next spring, which I will the smaller ones. Now this next one, I used some granular mix that was just leftovers from some repotting, um, and it just happened to have liverwort in it. So I thought, well, let's just see how this one gets on if I never remove the liverwort. And well, it's doing okay. It's not very tall, but it's certainly very healthy. This next one has a much higher percentage of peat moss um, with some granular components as well. But you'll notice, although it's grown reasonably well, the leaves, there just are not as many leaves as some of the others. So I suspect that the roots are not doing so well in there. Also, you'll notice quite a lot of these already, it's September and a lot of these are forming buds, I think ready for next year. This one's similar mix, uh, mostly peat moss, not very good. And this one again, Really, they're not doing so healthily, these last few. That one is comprised of mostly peat moss and just on the surface. So if we scratch away some of these granules on the surface, you'll see it's just peat moss underneath. And like the last two, uh, the leaves are not particularly doing that well. Makes me just think this kind of soil is not favouring the development of the roots. And we knew that because it's the same for bonsai. You need to have a good draining granular soil. So now here you see quite a few of them in smaller pots. And here is a similar story. Uh, this one has got mostly peat moss and you can see the leaves are not doing so well. 
Now this one, for an experiment, I planted in 100% vermiculite just to see how it went. And you can see the vermiculite here. And I was surprised to see that has been the best grower pretty much of all the Pyrenean oaks. It's really strong. It's made a lot of leaves during this year. So I think that tells us plant in good draining soil like vermiculite or perlite. And here's another that was uh, in good draining soil, something different. I think this was cat litter. Now this end section, I noticed early on that all of these were really suffering in bad soil and almost dying or not producing new leaves. So I repotted them early on in spring into good draining soil and look how they've gone, much better. So once again, here's the evidence. We need to plant our acorns in good draining soil right from the beginning. Lastly, in general, new shoots come out in spring. That means that if it's still winter time because you've done all of this activity in your house and the shoots are coming out now, it can really help the growth of your new shoot if you give it the artificial conditions so that it starts developing as if it were spring until it's warm enough out and there's enough daylight outside to put the pots outside. Thanks so much for watching, hope you enjoyed it, and if you did, please hit that like button. And if you haven't already subscribed, please go ahead and subscribe to Blue Sky Bonsai. If you've got any questions or doubts about the content of this video, don't hesitate just to leave a comment below. Thanks again for watching, see you next time.